Violence.com, violenceofmind.com. I want to talk about criminal combat culture. Uh, one of the biggest things that I push in my training and all the uh, methodology and background of the training is orientation. Orientation is the foundation and the filters through which you make all the decisions you make in a fight uh, and in everything else that you do in life. But specifically with fighting, it's very important. Um, one of the big components of that uh, orientation is culture. What are your cultural beliefs? So, what we have with the criminal element, the extremely violent criminal element, is a deeply cultured way of thinking and, and way of living that is centered around violence and the glorification of violence uh, that a lot of average people would never comprehend. Um, so you've got uh, three basic components of criminal combat culture. Uh, there's the domestic violence component, which is you grow up with it into it and you see it happen you know extreme violence between family members violence between uh, family members and, and you or against you when you're a kid um, this is a very it's a very big part of it that's that's where the conditioning begins um, I know myself the beatings that I took as a kid uh, you know growing up in a drug house and, and you know with the uh, extremely volatile gangsters as, as family members, um, you know, coat hangers, fire pokers, uh, you know, the belt buckle under the belt, uh, I took all that shit, and uh, by the time I was a teenager, it was nothing for me to fight grown men, because the way I seen it was there wasn't nothing that, uh, that you could dish out that I hadn't already got, so, um, and there's, there's more to that, but domestic violence is that first component, so you grow up with it, you're born into it, you're, you're indoctrinated in violence. Um, after that comes social violence. So the social violence is when you begin to venture out into the neighborhood and into the school. And typically when you are um, in that type of environment, your neighborhood is not good and you're school is not good so social violence becomes a very big part of that uh, and, and you're tested out there so everything that you've learned as a kid in the, in the domestic realm you're now taking it out and testing it out in the world world to see where your dominance lies at uh, part of the social violence and the, the domestic violence segueing into the social is the glorification of violence in your culture uh, for me, growing up, one of the biggest things that people would sing praises over was violence. So I heard all the stories of my crazy uncles and all the all the great violent things that they did, um, and the enthusiasm that these stories would be told over and over with. Uh, it it makes you as a kid want to be that you know get that praise because you want to be that violent. So you're going to take it to the next level and be even more violent. Um, and then, and then, you know, when you do that, uh, you pay the consequences, of course, but you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about that glorification. This is a big thing in gang culture and in, in uh, violent culture. So after that, uh, you know, you, you're out there, you test that out. Um, there's gang affiliation, there's, you know, um, uh, you begin dating, and then there's problems with, with girls. Everything leads to violence in the social realm um, when you come from that world. So eventually the next natural part of that progression is prison culture um, and specifically prison combat culture. Uh, and if you, I don't know if anyone has ever used that term before, but if not, I'll coin it here, but it's definitely a thing. Prison combat culture is definitely a thing. Uh, and, and there are some people that that uh, come out of prison that are hard as fuck. Uh, you know, I I, uh, I can tell you firsthand that there's some, you know the shit that you 
you see and endure and participate in uh, stabbings, beatings, rape, uh, men raping men, right? Um, this is, you know, this shit happens every day. It happens all the time. Um, you see people get beat to death by, by other prisoners. People get beat to death by guards. Uh, I've watched it happen. I've seen guys go out on the card covered by a sheet uh, and their life expired. Someone has taken that from them. Um, I've seen it several times. And this this becomes a part of your culture, part of your belief system. It's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, you fucking believe that you have to be violent because you've seen people get taken off this earth. And you firsthand have seen it, so you know it's real and you don't want to be that person. So your level of violence is going to kick up quite a few notches uh, to keep from being the one on the court underneath that sheet. Um, number two, it's a conditioning. You know, I talk about all the time the two, the two main components of a fighter are conditioning and orientation. Uh, that's it, conditioning and orientation. Conditioning is, is physical conditioning of, of your, your body's ability to deliver and also the mental conditioning of your, your ability to persevere and stick through uh, whatever is coming at you. That also requires conditioning uh, mixed with orientation. The conditioning of, of prison combat culture is intense. Uh, it's, it's fucking intense like nothing else. And I would venture to say that um, I know guys that uh, have done really intense LE programs and, and guys that have been in you know, military and stuff like that. And I know that there's some intense shit that happens there. But uh, I, I would have to say that, you know, living with uh, the most violent people on the face of the earth that have no morals and no conscience and, and are completely pure predators 24 hours a day for years on end is pretty fucking intense shit. Um, and I'd put it up against any experience and fucking uh, that, that a man can come across in terms of uh, warrior school. Uh, I think it's uh, right up there at the fucking top. So, prison combat culture and criminal combat culture, uh, it produces serious fucking fighters. One of the things that I've heard a lot of people talk about on uh, social media lately is how stupid criminals are and how they can't fight and, and they're usually just dumb asses and this and that. Um, I've been in least a couple hundred fights in my life and I will say that I will agree with you on the majority count however I can think back to a handful that were serious fucking killers and there were times that you know that I've got holes put in me that they intended to put a lot more in me um, there were times that I had to put a lot of holes in motherfuckers to stop them um, you know, there, there were instances where guys just didn't stop no matter what you did to them. And I've watched guys take five, six, seven hits with a, with a shank and, and get punched until their eyes are rolling in the back of their fucking head and they're still on their feet fighting and you're like, what the fuck is this guy running on, you know? Um, and those people are out there, man. They're out there and they, they're fucking mean. And if you run up on that guy, I'm going to tell you right, right fucking now that your orientation is not ready for that dude. Um, there is, you know, and I'm not busting on anybody in the fucking training world, but I'm telling you right now, if you come from a training in the training world and you don't come from fighting, you don't know what I'm fucking talking about. Uh, because the shit that you think about is not the shit that that guy thinks about. Um, I had the benefit of, you know, being a fighter first and then going to train. Um, and so what I mean by that is I grew up in this violence culture. I grew, grew up, I was raised by this criminal combat culture. That was my life, my home. I came through that, through prison combat culture, and then I went and trained formally. I trained in boxing, you know, I boxed Trace Miller in Knoxville. Um, I went and did a little bit of BJJ. Uh, 
that and I went in to uh, train with some of the best gunfighters in the world. I've trained with SWAT, and, you know, some U.S. Special Forces guys. I've been uh, on the range, you know, fortunate to be on the range with EAG, you know, several times. And, and uh, I've trained with the best in the world there. And it's easy for me to go back and say, okay, as I'm training, I'm looking at it and thinking, this is important, this is important, this would have been a big help. And then there's other shit that I see that people think is important that's really not that fucking important in the fight. So so coming from having been in, in lethal force competitions and looking at it, I'm telling you what I see is important based on having been there. Um, and people coming from the training side and never having fought don't have that benefit. Uh, so keep that in mind. But the point of that is, is that, you know, these guys that are out there, you don't train for the idiots. You don't train for the guys that you can beat easily. You train for the one or two that are killers, that 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 run like the Energizer fucking bunny, and no matter how many holes you put them, they don't stop until their fucking hydraulic pump doesn't pump anymore. Um, and that's just all there is to it. Uh, be aware of your enemy. Do recon on your enemy. Do not underestimate your opponent. Think about the criminal combat culture. Think about what produces these people. And then when you're in their training, you're in there pumping out reps or you're putting rounds down range, think about the, the criminal element that's being produced right now as we speak. The ones who are getting hardened in prison. The ones who are getting their fucking asses kicked as little kids at home in a shitty environment, people screaming and fighting, and, and dad stabs mom, and everybody's fucking dying. Like, that's the kind of shit that's producing the next guy that you're 